and welcome back today we are flying out the su 11 and yes your eyes do not deceive you it does have afterburners in the thumbnail the only reason you don't see them here is because my post effects are kind of acting up trust me it definitely has the power of an after burning engine but in all seriousness this thing has no business at 7.0 it's way too fast it has way too much acceleration and on top of that the maneuverability isn't all that bad either it basically has everything going for it other than perhaps the guns but the 40 37 millimeters still sure get the job done they're not that great for fighter to fighter combat but they still pack quite a punch and considering you have 40 rounds as well as all the energy in the world you can get away with basically everything this thing is essentially the pay to win kika as i also named my previous video on this thing and nothing really changed if anything it's called an even better since then because now it actually has 40 rounds of the 37 millimeter and now you got a bunch of la 200s in your team which are also criminally under tiered and this is one of these planes that just completely negates anything the horton can do and no, the Horton still isn't a good plane, feel free to prove me wrong, but so far, well, no one has actually convinced me yet. But the SU-11, I've done 32 games, got 100 kills, died once, and lost two games, one of them being on ticket, and the other one being the first game I ever did in it, which was a 1v6. Is this thing worth your money? Well, yes, it's one of those planes that busted in all regards. And even if they updated it to 7.3, where it used to be, and for some reason it isn't anymore, it is still going to be pretty competitive. Do I recommend you to buy it, however? That is completely up to you. I'm not a Gaijin chill. You are free to do with your money what you want. This thing is extremely hand-holdy, and it is extremely good, but you still have to be careful. If you do not really know what you are doing, especially in jet combat... This thing still kind of feels awkward and you might still mess up a lot and die very often because of it. You can't really go head on, which is not really that big of a deal. It does feel very wonky at higher speed. Maybe you see it. I also just missed, don't get me wrong. But it's also kind of weird to get your guns on at higher speeds. The roll kind of compresses, the rudder feels kind of weird. And the turn rate, it feels like it's on rails. It doesn't really pull any AOA. Which makes it maintain its energy quite well. Because as you can see, I'm maintaining 560 here. Just pulling straight. And this bad with the fact that it's not the most agile, it's still pretty damn maneuverable, especially for what it is with the other attributes in tandem. But keep in mind, if you get on someone 6, you might actually accelerate so hard, you might actually maintain so much speed and just not turn enough to where you can get your guns on that you might overshoot. It is very punishing if you fly it very cocky, if you fly it very overconfidently. If you think I'm going to win every engagement, you might get punished. If you fly this thing pretty methodically, if you fly pretty safe, and if you really pick your engagement and know how to not waste an energy advantage and just go and loop instead of going full send, turn fighting everyone you see, you will find that you are basically untouchable. Unless, of course, again, you run into planes like the ME163, which just kind of roll all over you. But again, that happens with every plane that doesn't outrun it. So... How do you fly this thing? It's pretty damn easy. At least in essence and it will ask some consistency from you. You just stay fast. And that's not a very hard task. Considering you have acceleration out the ass. You have a pretty good top speed. And you also just maintain the energy forever. So instead of dogfighting this guy. I'm just going to fly straight. I'm going to go up slightly. If he doesn't follow me. Well I can just turn around and run him down. If he does follow me. He will stall out a kilometer below me. On top of that, the damage model of this thing is tanky as all hell. It takes so much punishment, even when I'm flying it. Normally I'm pretty much used to always getting my, well, my shit kicked in if I get hit by anything. And this thing, I've survived quite a few hits. I also notice it when I start shooting at other people. These things do not die and they will make it back to ha with half an engine all the way to the other side of the map. F80 is trying to follow me. I'm just bleeding as much speed of him. Of his as I can. And then we go up. If he tries to follow now. He's going to stall out. And he's going to die. If he doesn't. I can just drop back on top of him. People say. Well. The only thing this thing has going for it. Is if people stall themselves out for you. Which is partially true. Because if this guy doesn't stick the fight. Guess what. I can just run him down. Regardless. They can't really get away from this thing. It is kind of a demon in that regard. But. There is one big caveat to all of this. And that is. Is this thing a good grinder. And I'm going to say. 
No, and this sounds very weird, I know. But this thing is not the greatest at getting very quick kills. You cannot be very overly aggressive in it. Just go in, shoot six people down and then win the match on your own. Your entire team consists out of very good planes. You're gonna have planes like the LA-200. Although SU-11s. Expect more SU-11s after this video. You got planes like the MiG-9 late. BIs. There is a lot of planes in your team that are just so good that very often you are going to be struggling to get kills. While this thing is amazing and not dying, getting consistent kills, it is not the best at power grinding. Buying a thing, getting a lot of kills quickly, maybe dying, going to the next game, it's not good at that. It's very good at not dying, it's very good at just hurting the entire enemy team but very often your team is so damn good that you are gonna be sitting with one maybe less kills if you are not really confident in what you are doing it does ask a lot of you to get a high kill per game in this thing just because your team is so good it's not a plane issue the plane is absolutely bonkers as i've stressed enough times by now but keep in mind in terms of a power grinding tool at least right now it is not the best, and that's simply because while well, the 37, the lack of instantaneous turn rate, and just the absolute insanity that is Russia 7.0 right now. And here we are fighting props, and fighting props in this thing is uh, about as unfair as you can get it. Quick check over there, let's see how he is doing in the F2G, get a bit of a rough understanding, and we are just gonna turn in, and if he dives on me, which... He is probably going to be doing i can just pitch up for him and the reason i'm running 89 percent throttle is so that i don't overheat two percent doesn't really do anything but at least it makes my engines nice and cool the f2g here is just completely oblivious i dove below him i noticed that he's not paying attention to me anymore so i'm just gonna pitch back into him and he's not really paying attention to me he sees me last second a little bit too late and down he goes give me that tail and we are going to be on our merry way to our next victim. We have an F2G right below us as well as a P51 right next to us. So, I see him a little bit too late. Mistake on my part. I wasn't aware enough. But I'm in the SU-11. I'm already going 900 again. At least on the speed metric. And that P51 is never going to get close to me. Right now, I'm trying to turn into him. Trying to get him to dive on me even more. And the second he commits to me, he is going to lose that energy. And I can just zoom straight back up. And Math Matt is doing exactly that. The F4U7 also tried to pitch up for me. It is not going to happen. I'm still going 850. And I'm just going to put it into this little shallow climb. And if they think about following this. Well you already know what is going to happen. As long as I hit my shot. They are not going to be doing anything. The only problem with the props. As well as some other jets like the Meteor Mark 3. Which are insanely annoying to fight in this thing. Because they turn well enough to always push ahead on last second. And you can't really do much against that. So you have to keep dodging them until they are completely out of energy. The problem is something like the Meteor Mark III as well as the F2G and P51As have so much low speed acceleration. They can basically, you handle them like a helicopter where they are, they are always looking at you. Here I'm faking the attack on the F2G, hoping that the P51 comes for us. So I'm just going to break off a little bit. And he now wasted his entire energy advantage. I'm still going 920. We go ahead on with this other F for you. Because he is occupied. But. He goes ahead on with the Razor. He takes his wingtip off. And because of that I am going to break off. Because it gives him a confidence boost. And I'm not about to take a head on with four A&M trees. So. We now have another contender. We have P51H and number 2. That's trying to go for us. So the first thing I do now is go sideways. In the hope that he's going to try to cut me off. And try to pull lead pursuit on me. And he's going to bleed a lot of speed doing that. But in the event of that happening, I see an F-80 above me and I'm just going to switch targets. And even though the F-80 is above me, I'm going 640. And now I level out, get a little bit of more speed up to actually fight this guy. P-51H is now not a threat anymore. He's too damn low. He's not going to be doing anything in the next two minutes. So I'm just free to fight this F-80 right above the P-51. The F-80 dives on us. He's going to pick up a little bit of speed. So we should be able to turn into this guy. Misjudged his speed a little bit. He was a little bit slower than expected. So we almost end up colliding. Not that close, but no sure shot. And I see that the F-80 is now pulling off. So I'm just going to be running up for the P-51H again. Attempting to bait this guy into coming back for us. 
And if he doesn't, I will just kill his buddy. So he can either come in and help his buddy, and then I will kill the F-80, or I kill the P-51, and then the F-80. There is no real way to stop me here unless he gets a lucky hit, or if I make a misplay. The P-51 H starts diving out, and don't manage to get a real good shot in, but we managed to get a crit. Don't really know what it is, but he is crit nonetheless, and we are going to keep that in mind. He is smoking a little bit. But for now we are just going to be breaking off because the F-80 is paired up with an A2D and they are both coming into this direction. So what do we do? We disengage a little bit, we do a shadow climb and if the A2D thinks about following this, he is not going to be doing very well. The P-51H is RTB and the A2D is just not real threat here. He's not really a danger so I'm just going to be ignoring him and I'm going to be running down the F-80. Notice how much turning I've done. I've fought the p51 i've done a 180 again and this f80 is now being ran down by me that is the acceleration of this thing and that's how bullshit it really is there is the p51 from the start and we saw what he did he is very greedy he really wants to take the fight as long as the number is decreasing so we are gonna make use of that the f80 that is above him will probably just fly away again he is very patient sure but i feel like it's more of the kind of patient because he doesn't really know what he's doing he is going to be turning in, he won't get the shot, he dodges the head on and he's probably just going to dive out and run away again because that's what he has been doing this entire time. He doesn't put on any pressure. He is patient, but again it feels like he is patient because he's just waiting for something to happen instead of trying to make something happen. And just as expected, the P-51H is coming up and the F-80 is just diving away. And this P-51H is not going to come anywhere close to me. I'm going to keep pulling this loop a little bit closer and closer so he is gaining distance on me. Keep in mind, I'm still going 450. He's doing nowhere near that. But he's still closing the gap on me because I am letting him. He's now going to try to pitch up probably. He's probably going to try to prop hang me. And if he does, he is simply going to die. I do not want to stall out going straight vertical makes me a very easy target for a bunch of 50 gals instead i go horizontal i get behind him and then drop right on top of him if i miss this shot i can just disengage and run away but that didn't happen because he was very much committed the f80 is now on the other side of the map and as expected didn't try to kill me at all he could have made my life pretty difficult together with the p51h instead they decide to break up yet again not sure what the deal is with that but again at 7.0 you expect a lot of guys to just kind of be clueless and i don't mean this in a negative sense from 7.0 and out the game just becomes pretty different and you have to get used to it there's a lot of guys here that are still learning the game but right now we have an f80 as well as the f u and i believe it's a 7 yes it is but i'm above them i'm coming in with more speed than them on top of it and i have more energy than them in terms of being an equal fight too so i have triple energy advantage here i'm just gonna spiral up he can't really get the shot in we loop on over the second he is stalled out and we are just gonna commit to this f80 he is now slow and he's not gonna be doing much so i want to kill him right here and now because i don't want him to disengage again and then come back later when i start engaging someone else fu47 tries to push ahead on with me too slow to do so so we kill him and now we recommit to the f80 we get on a 6, we manage to get a crit, we hit him a little bit more, and down he goes. And that's going to be kill number 4. Pretty quick, pretty easy. And now we just continue on straight, and we are going to be cleaning up the last few guys. I have 1 minute 40 or few left, which would last about 150 probably, considering my percentage of the throttle. But that's not a huge difference. F2G, I don't want to take the head on, so I just break off and look at his speed difference. Absolutely bonkers. And the F2G is not a slow prop. It's one of those props that's probably on average the fastest. Because they just have so much acceleration. That is basically the prop version of this plane. The F2G. And I just completely walk all over it. Of course it's at 6.0 for some reason. Even though it should be 6.3 maybe even 6.7. But that's going to be a different topic. Still one of the best premium planes in the game. Very very cheap. Rank 4. And I still advise people to pick that one up as your first premium probably the, the best buy you can get for about i think it's eight guys down he goes because he puts himself into a flat spin we break off a to d has razor on his six and it's going to be an absolute cleanup and we get five kills each waiting for him to kill him he has full ammo and only one guy to kill with him so he's going to use all his ammo excuse the music in the background i just got done streaming the death server 
when this happened and I forgot to change up my audio settings again. We go ahead on with the Meteor. He dodges, we do the same thing and we just fly straight. And then the F-89B gets spotted on R6. Now the F-89B is actually pretty annoying. It has a lot of guns, it has a lot of AOA. So if it gets on your 6 and you're not fast enough to really dodge him, he actually becomes pretty damn annoying because he just kind of pulls into your turn, hoses you down. And if that gun, if those guns hit you, you are definitely going to die. But for now, I'm just trying to keep my speed a little bit high. F-89, the first one or the second one, no matter, no matter how you look at it, managed to break off. And now we are completely left alone with this F-89B in a 1v1. So I'm leading his turn. I'm just going on 90 degrees and then we pull up and over. If he tries to follow this, he will bleed a lot of energy. And that's exactly what I want him to do. I don't want to go very fast. I can outrun this guy. Because he has a pretty high rip speed. And we are just going to maintain this loop here. And make him waste all his energy. He has pretty poor retention. He has pretty good acceleration as well. But in these prolonged fights he will just stall himself out. We are directly on top of him by about 800 meters. When he starts pulling up. So he's probably going slower as well. He's probably going about the same speed. About three to 400 meters below me. Meteor right next to us. He is not really gunning it for us yet. So I'm just going to commit to this fight for now. I'm trying to kill this F-89 as quickly as I can. And if then the, the Meteor decides to turn for us. I can still kill him. Just as planned. F-89 ends up in front of us pretty quickly. And I'm just going to be diving out. And picking up all my speed again. So that this Meteor cannot jump me. As easily as he wants to. Not sure what Meteor it is. It's probably going to be a Mark 8. As most Meteors are nowadays. And the Meteor Mark 8 is pretty annoying. This is a full up tier of course. And they are pretty annoying to fight. Because they, they are faster than you. And they definitely turn better than you. And they are much more stable than you. At higher speeds on top of it. So it makes it very easy for them. If they start outrunning you. To just kind of hose you down. Especially if they don't really care about getting multiple kills. And just hose all the 600 rounds. Directly on your engines. But for now I'm just kind of staying at the outskirts looking for stragglers. And I see the F2H Banshee here. One of those really bad planes that's on his own. So I'm just going to be diving in right now. Trying to cut him off. I'm leading his turn. He's going to come pretty damn close here. He's pulling in. We shoot a few rounds and down he goes. Dodge the F89 in the head on. Because I do not want to contest that at all. I don't even feel like shooting in those. And for now I'm just trying to keep my speed. And I look at this 7.0 and I'm going 660 on the deck. I'm just defense flying right now. I'm just going left and right. Trying to outrun these guys. Trying to get out of gun range. And the main competitors here are going to be the Meteor. As well as the F84G. And we put it into a little bit of a climb. And our team isn't looking very great. So right now I want to kind of reposition. Kind of find my position on the map. Trying to see who I can engage. Who I can help out. And for now I just want to disengage from the fight. And this might seem pretty greedy. And it kind of is. I'm somewhat using my team as bait here. To get myself into a better position. And take down one of the prime targets. So I want to kill the F84G. The F89B. Or the Meteor. But for now I'm just looking around and seeing who I can pick off. Everyone is going for that one guy on my six or on my team. The IL-28. There's four guys on them now. So I'm going to be diving in here pretty quickly to see if I can do something about it. The A2D below is going pretty slow. Prime target and there's an FAD4 coming in making it so that I cannot go for any of those guys on the deck. Because if I get an FAD4 B on my six, he's pretty maneuverable for what it is. He's not, he doesn't turn very well, but he pulls a lot of AOA and it, he has a very easy time getting his 50 kills on target. And that's something I don't want to happen. So we just go up, we go into a spiral. If the FAD4 thinks about turning around, I just stall him out. He doesn't. Instead the A2D does and I'm just going to be well, pulling straight down for him. Because he is basically a prime target right now. The other two guys are running away. Probably going to be RTB. And uh, the A2D here is just... Well, giving himself a pretty hard time. I'm going to be trying to kill him as quickly as I can. Just to get these numbers down a little bit. Because the A2D, while in his own, on his own, not a very big threat. He can be very annoying if he's flying next to, say, an F84G. Because the F84G does run you down. And he does have a pretty easy time just... Spraying you with 50 kills. We shoot him in the dive. We manage to over and under lead at the same time. But we just disengage. Still going 850. No reason to get overly aggressive here. And the other two guys are RTB anyway. And near our base is another A2D. Which is again on its own. 
as well as a meteor somewhere but i'm not too sure where he is right now oh he's still chasing the il-28 as well so after doing a few loops a to d is basically going on takeoff speeds here he's way too slow to dodge anything so we gun him down there comes the meteor we're going 830 still after all of that and we're just gonna go head on with the meteor razor assumed that he was out of ammo because he wasn't shooting at the il-28 at all i'm gonna try to turn in here hoping he's gonna commit but he clearly doesn't and he is also going to be rtb so we have an f84g and f84b the meteor as well as an f89b in the enemy team that are all gonna come up come at us in a 4v2 now this is completely winnable but my team has to actually help me out here because the su-11 versus the planes that are faster as well as all the planes that are more maneuverable planes with similar acceleration the planes that they have in their lineup they complement each other pretty well which makes it so that i have to be pretty careful and that we have to really play as a team the problem is going to be he's going to be doing the absolute opposite the enemy team has uh, has been communicating and i have checked it they were talking in the, the team chat in the enemy team they were trying to group up trying to 1v4 me and that's in the end almost going to cost me the game because they actually regrouped they actually waited for each other to take off and that's what you have to do so often i'm 1v6 1v4 1v3 doesn't matter and they come at me one by one and especially if i'm in a better plane that's just not a very great idea stay together with your team when you are heavily outnumbered and if you are heavily outnumbering them you still have to stay with your team team play can diminish your number disadvantage and vice versa it can also make it stronger and that's exactly what these guys do and right now the su-11 on my team is going the other way which is perfect he's bringing the meteor away from this fight and i can fight these three guys on my own at the same time no big deal all that su-11 has to do is keep that meteor busy and i can clean these guys up the f-89 here is pretty annoying as well as the f-84g but my teammate has the f-84b as well as the other guy going for him so i can now try to engage the f-89 because the f-84g is also trying to keep his distance i go under him in the hope that he's going to compress and the hope that he's going to rip his wing off because the f-89 is so damn prone to that and he does exactly that which is pretty funny down he goes and now i can go 1v1 the f84 we've broken up these four guys pretty handily that guy just ripped on his own just kind of lucky and i can now 1v1 this f84 the f84 is gonna fly towards his f89 body that in a flat spin and i'm actually gonna pretend to go for the f89 in the hope that the f84 is gonna go for me so that i can well bag another kill the F-84 is going to run me in this kind of engagement. But the F-89 builds out. Making it so that I can't use him as bait anymore. So I'm going to be turning back in. The problem is the SU-11. Now that I'm completely below him. I'm about 3-3.5 three three kilometers below him. Is going to do the absolute worst possible thing he could have done. And he's going to dive directly on top of me. And why is this such a bad thing? I am 1v1 in this F-84. He is bringing two guys over with a pretty hefty energy advantage on me. And all he's going to be doing for it is trying to kill a guy that wasn't really a threat to begin with because I was directly on a 6. He blows his damn wing off and he leaves me in a 1v3 with two guys having a massive energy advantage on me. I'm not sure what he was doing but you sure weren't helping me. So for now I'm going to be trying to split these guys up. This is a very bad position to be in. The F-84 seems to be running min fuel or he's chasing the SU-11. I'm not too sure because he is flying towards their base. Not sure what he's doing. Not sure if he's out of fuel or whatever. But for now I'm just trying to get these guys as closely together as possible. Because the Meteor and the F-84 have different speeds. So the Meteor was trying to get kind of next to the F-84. And I can now pitch up, pull into the Meteor. Hopefully kill him. If I miss this I am completely boned managed to get a crit in i'm not too sure how damaged he is and this is kind of the the risk of it this is what happens in the 2v1 you need to take a risk i took the risk he damaged both my engines and now i can stall this f84 out the problem is the meteor was pulling for me and afterwards right now i can tell that he was more damaged than i thought he was so this almost got me killed the f84 is now going to be pitching back up for me but hey as i said this plane is an absolute tank 
and I'll show you exactly how tanky it is. I am completely crippled. I have a yellow and a red engine. And I have an every for about 400 meters on my 6. And look at this. I'm going to be outrunning him pretty handily. So, for now, he is going to catch me in the long run. Because I just do not have the power. The Meteor is struggling to stay in the air. And the every 4 will not get the shot here. Because he is simply too slow at these speeds. Well, the every 4 is not going to be pulling too much AOA. So, we predict his turn. He is going to go into the wrong direction. We try to get the shot in here. If he had kept pulling to the left here, I would have died. But instead, he decides to go back to the right and then pull vertical. Manages to fly directly into my guns. The meteor then crashes on landing and we win on time. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one.